is Fallout 76 canon? A few weeks ago, I saw a Twitter poll that asked this very question, is Fallout 76 canon? This question was obvious to me. After all, I have spent nearly a year covering Fallout 76's lore, documenting the stories told by the past citizens of Appalachia and its landscape. I had been hoping that each one of my videos represented a little piece of the grand Fallout zeitgeist that will live on forever. So going back to the Twitter poll, of course Fallout 76 is canon. I confidently voted yes. This action revealed the popular consensus of the poll. It showed that I was part of a very small minority. Only about 20% of people agreed with me. This was disappointing, so in this video, I want to go over some things in Fallout 76 that definitely are canon, and I want to go over some things that probably aren't canon, and show some context from Fallout 3 and 4. At the end, I think I have a complete answer to this question, even if it's not the one that you or I want to hear. Let's go over some controversial things that I consider canon, even if some of them have received retcons post-launch, starting off with the Brotherhood of Steel. Before the game launched, the community was up in arms about the Brotherhood being included in the game, some saying it wasn't possible with the established lore. A little bit of backstory on the Brotherhood, they were created just a few days before the Great War. At the time, they were located at the Mariposa military base in California, and remained there until around 2150. So how could the Brotherhood be present in Appalachia in 2102? Well, in my video, Before Operation Touchdown, the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel, Roger Maxson, used a radio to get into contact with a military unit located in Appalachia led by Elizabeth Taggarty. Their correspondence over several months eventually led to the creation of the Appalachia sect of the Brotherhood of Steel. Specifically, when Roger Maxson transmitted the Formation of the Brotherhood of Steel speech in his bunker from California. Here is a short clip from that speech. Speech. We cannot look to the America of old for that purpose. We have to build our own. So tonight, as we break bread together, let us forge together something new, something strong, something we can be proud of, something we can build upon. We'll preserve what's best of what's come before us and use it. And one day, we will reclaim what was lost. Let us forge Brotherhood. After hearing the speech, Elizabeth Taggarty was inspired to form the Appalachian sect of the Brotherhood. So, the Brotherhood in Appalachia is canon, and I wouldn't even call this a retcon, maybe just filling in blank spots in the lore. Before launch, Bethesda even put out a tweet trying to explain this for themselves. Another potentially lore-breaking thing we find in Appalachia is the use of bottle caps as currency. Again, just like the Brotherhood, people questioned how the use of bottle caps as currency traveled from California, where it originated, all the way across the country to Appalachia. Well, there is a possible explanation for this also, but it's a little bit more of a stretch. Inside the White Springs Hotel, we can find a terminal updating the staff members about an upcoming event. Staff Bulletin, October 2077. We'll skip down to the part about Nuka-Cola. The Nuka-Cola Corporation will sponsor our first business class promotion to celebrate the release of Nuka-Cola Quantum. Nuka-Cola bottle caps will be accepted as legal tender throughout the hotel. So after reading this terminal, we don't have to assume too much to understand why Appalachia started using caps as currency. The Greenbrier was known to be protected by robots before the Great War and was probably the safest place in Appalachia. When the bombs fell, people probably flocked here from all around, and because caps were being accepted here as legal tender, they started using them everywhere. So, caps in Appalachia I would consider to be canon, even if they don't specifically say how it happened. So these are just two of the several lore inconsistencies that we find in Fallout 76. But keep in mind, Bethesda did a pretty good job with the world of Fallout 76 to keep things canon. I'll get into that more later in the video. So now that we have covered a few controversial perceived lore breaks, let's go over some lore in Fallout 76 that may not be canon. Starting off with the biggest one in my opinion, respawning. 
If you have ever played a previous Fallout game, you would know that if you died in that game, you would literally have to go back in time to a previous save and retry whatever you were trying to accomplish, keeping the timeline intact. But in Fallout 76, it doesn't shy away from a simple respawn system, with no explanation from lore. If you die, you just leave a bag on the ground. Besides respawning, I think the second biggest lore break in Fallout 76 is the inclusion of several of the Atomic Shop items. Items like the Liberty Prime Power Armor skin. While pretty cool to use in-game, and nice that you can equip it to any power armor, it has no origin in lore whatsoever. I realize that this is only a skin, not a new form of power armor, but honestly, it's all the same to me. Moving on to some smaller things, the nukes in Fallout 76 are a little different than in previous Fallout games. Like in Fallout 3, you could trigger a nuclear bomb to blow up the town of Megaton. After Megaton's destruction, there's a large radioactive crater left in its place, changing the landscape forever. Similar events like this occurs in Fallout 4 when you blow up the Institute. But while in Fallout 76, you can launch three nukes in a tightly packed formation, and in a few hours, there will be no evidence that anything ever happened. It's almost like you never did anything in the first place. The theme of the world not even realizing that you're there continues with regenerating dungeons and server hopping. While loot does respawn in other Fallout games, it could be conceived that other humans were replacing some of the items that you take, because in other games, there are NPCs and other humans. While in Fallout 76, you and the other vault dwellers are supposed to be there alone, so there is no attempt at an explanation here. And again, it's almost like you were never there in the first place. And that leads to my point. Fallout 76 has some troubled lore, with some outstanding retcons. Several that I didn't mention in this video, like a terminal that mentions Jet several hundred years before Jet was created. So Fallout 76's world and everything in it is in fact canon. That is the answer that I was looking for. But as a player of Fallout 76, you have to come to terms that everything that you do as a player and everything you touch, trigger, pick up, or kill isn't canon to the Fallout lore. The world is canon, but you are not. This stands in stark contrast to the other Fallout games, where much of the fun in those games was created when permanently modifying the world forever. Just a side note here at the end, I posted a would you consider Fallout 76 to be canon Twitter poll and got different answers than the one that inspired this video. In this case, 63% of people thought it was canon and 38% disagreed. I think this poll just shows that the majority of my followers appreciate the lore for what it is and are willing to overlook some of the smaller inconsistencies. Alright guys, I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. Also consider following me on Twitter. It's the best place for me to keep in contact with you guys. But anyway, this has been Woodgen TV. Thanks for watching, guys. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah.